also Blended Savages. So today, I'm going to show you how to make a, a rig for a car. Get the tire spinning. Front wheel spinning. Check it out. Here comes your car. Boom. Tesla Cybertruck, baby. All right. Let me show you guys what we got set up right here. Post mode. I can move this bad boy here. And it'll move the tires. See? All right. So I'll show you how to make this. Uh, not the truck. We'll just download one. The truck's actually uh, not too challenging to make. It does uh, take a while. But we're going to go over to blendswap.com and um, go ahead and do a search for Tesla Cybertruck. And there's a couple of options there for the Tesla Cybertruck. Blendswap.com. You can download free Blender files at blendswap.com. Make sure to create an account so you can download them. Use the search engine there. And Tesla Cybertruck. And I will provide a link in the description. Uh, for this one here that I'm using by Tally Jennard. Jennard, Tally Jennard. I'm not sure how to pronounce that name. Uh, this one right here wasn't made as well as this one. This was made out of indiv individual parts. Uh, this one did have something there that I didn't like where there was double faces here on the door and they just UV wrapped this directly from an image. So the tires did come out a little weird, but you can always uh, change that. You can always play around with that. So you can see here the lighting there on the tires. There's shadow and the light there moving around. All right, so to download it, make sure to create an account and then click on download. You'll download your file and then just open it up. Here's a file once you open it up. There's a lot of stuff in there. I just want the, the truck and the, and the wheels there. Uh, it's in edit mode, so let me go over to object mode. So this is saved just how the person left it when they uploaded it. So I went back to object mode. And then down here, oh, sorry, up here in the upper right, here's my outliner, this whole section. And here are my collections. So uh, they collected this uh, cyber truck and tires. And there's something else in there, the uh, plain empty axis inside the car collection. So I'm going to open that up. I'm going to click on this triangle here, expand. There we go. And I'm going to select these three in here. I need the car design, which is the main body truck here. I'm going to hold on the shift key, click on mirror axis, because they use a mirror modifier to mirror um, the design of the vehicle. That way they only have to worry about one side and the other side it gets mirrored. It is symmetrical. I'm going to hold on the shift key and also click on tires here. There we go. So I need these three here selected. So I got my car, the mirror plane axis, which is in here somewhere, and the tires. So I'm saying, hey, control C to copy. And I'm going to open up a blank blender. Here we go. There's a blank project. I'm going to delete that cube there. X key delete. I'm going to paste that truck right in here. Control V. And there it is. Paste it. One for front view. And um, if you wonder what happened to the colors, it's still there. There. Just go over here to render viewport. And the colors are there. They just UV mapped uh, an image onto the truck. So all the UVs came over. The mirror modifier. Everything came over along with it. And there we go. The light isn't bright enough so we can see a little better. But there it is. So here you can see the <clears throat> UV wrap on this side. All right. So first thing that I'm going to do is uh, close out that other, other blender window. I don't need this anymore. So goodbye. There we go. Back to my main project here that I'm going to work on. I just copied and pasted it. And I'm going to delete this plane axis here. There's a plane axis down there. Just click on it. X key delete. There we go. And that was just to help out with the mirror modifier for the person that modeled this truck. So now I'm going to click on the truck. And I'm going to go over here to modifier. And they're using the mirror modifier. But we need to apply it. Because right now it's uh, two separate parts. And I don't want that. If you go to edit mode, you'll be able to see it. See, there it is. I just want to apply it so it becomes one part. I'm going to click on this arrow right here, the chevron inside the mirror modifier. And apply it or apply it. There we go. Now it's one solid part. No, uh, no half, no mirror. Uh, same thing for the tires. You also have a mirror modifier there. So I'm going to click on this arrow here and apply. There we go. Cool. So I'm done with that. Now what I want to do is separate the tires. So I'm going over here to the wireframe. I'm going to hit Shift Z. There we go. Uh, my tires are all one object. I want them to be individual, uh, individual objects so I can rotate them individually. Because right now I've hit R. X rotate, see something like that's going to happen. Y now there is another way to individually rotate them, but we're going to use an armature for this. All right, so I got my tire selected. Hit the tab key, take them to edit mode. There we go. Click on one tire, then hit L for Larry while your mouse is still there. And that's for vertex selection, vertex group selection. So you can individually select objects like that uh, in edit mode. You can individually select the vertex group, and each of these tires it's its own vertex group. All right, so I got this one selected here. I'm going to separate it. Hit P, P for pole, P for Pablo on your keyboard. 
and you get a separate menu. You can click on selection, so you can separate that selection from the rest. This currently our four tires are all one object, and now I'm going to separate them into individual objects. I just separated this one. And you can see here in the outliner, I got a new object in there. So I'm going to click on this one here, L for, for link, L for Larry. I'm going to hit P and selection. There you go, separate that one out. I'm going to separate this one here. Click it, L, P, selection. There we go. And by um, process of elimination, that one's already isolated. It's on its own now. So tab key, back to object mode. And now each wheel should be its own individual wheel. There we go. All right. So I need to adjust the origin or the pivot point because currently it's this yellow dot right here. And I want the tires to each have their own pivot points, their own origins. Because right now I've hit R, Y, rotate. It's going to rotate with respect to the center there. There we go. And I don't want that. I don't want that Ferris wheel effect. I want uh, its own rotation here. So select the tire, right click it, set origin. Origin is center of mass volume, the bottom one right here. And there it is. Now it's own pivot point there. So I'm going to click on this one. Pivot point is there. And I'm going to move it over here. Right click, set origin, set origin, center of mass volume, and do the same thing for the other two tires as well. So all the tires should have their own origin somewhere in the center there. Cool. And then the truck, same thing. Click on the truck, right click, set origin, center of mass volume. There it is. Move it up a little bit higher. All right, so I'm going to start bringing in my bones, and I want the bones to uh, be used to rotate my tires, my wheels. So I'm going to start out with this one right here. This is the, um, the front driver side tire. So there you go. Here's the front of the truck. I know it's a little harder to tell, but this is the front of it here. So you're going to select that tire. And you're going to move the 3D cursor, this one right here, right in there. So when you bring another object, it will appear there. So wherever that 3D cursor is at, that's where your next object will appear. But I want it to appear right here, right in the pivot point, right in the origin of this tire. So I'm going to bring up the snap menu, shift S, cursor to select, and move, and that will move the cursor to the selected right there. Cursor to select in. Boom, there it is, right at that pivot point there at the origin. Now I'm going to go up here next to global and by, by the magnet, between global and the magnet here. I'm going to click on this icon right here, and that's a transform pivot point. So right now, uh, it's the median point. So if, I wrote, so if I select multiple objects, it'll rotate with respect to the median point where they would the middlemost area. So if I select these two here, hit RY, they're going to rotate with respect to a middle point there. If I select one individually, it'll rotate with its own pivot point. But I wanted a 3D cursor. So pivot point and 3D cursor. And so now if I rotate something, it'll rotate with respect to the 3D cursor over there. And that's just for my bone later, not for these tires. All right, so I'm going to select this one here where I got the 3D cursor there, origin there. Shift A. And I'm going to go down here to armature, and it's going to bring in a bone. There it is. I got a bone right there. And now I'm going to hit the tab key to get to edit mode. All right, so now my bone is in edit mode. So with my bone selected, I hit the tab key. Now it's in edit mode. Uh, so I'm going to select my bone because right now this is selected here, the tail, this joint right here. So you got to select the shaft right here. There we go. So now I got the actual bone. So I'm going to create a duplicate. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees along the X axis so it shoots out this way. That's going to be Shift D, R, X, 9, 0, Enter. There we go. And notice it rotated with the pivot point there, because that's what we chose right there, uh, where the 3D cursor is at. So now I want to shoot it now forward over here. So I'm going to select this one again, my original. Shift D, R, Y, 9, 0, minus, and there, there we go. So I'm going to hit the minus, and it shot it back this way. Cool. So I got that set up there going. Now I want to make another bigger bone. It's going to be up here. So these right here are just for this tire, get this tire to move. Later, I'll make duplicates of it, but not yet. I still have to set this up. But I'm going to bring in another bone and put it up here. And that'll be my main bone that all the other bones will be parented to. It'll kind of be like um, like the handle for the whole setup there. All right. I'm going to use a sequence here on the left to create my, my duplicate. This way, everybody can follow along. Or, or you can just freehand it. You can do that as well. Create a duplicate and just put it up there. But with this one protruding forward, with that selected, you're going to follow the sequence here to duplicate, then move along the y-axis, then move along the z, move along the x, and then scale it three times. And this is going to work if you did not change the size of your Tesla truck. If you change the size of your Tesla truck, if you scaled it down or up, then this is not going to work out for you. All right, so shift E, Y, 1.05, enter, G, Z, 2.5, 
and GX 2.5 enter S3 enter and the scale to pi because I forgot one thing and that's the uh, this right here this pivot point I don't want to scale up there so undo and then undo 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 let's see G for gram all right so I got to change this back over here to medium point which was default all right now follow the sequence there so sorry about that make sure to first uh, switch over to medium point and then follow the sequence there Shift D, Y, 1.05, G, Z, 2.5, Enter, G, X, 2.5, Enter, S, 3, Enter. There we go. So now you notice that they didn't shoot up right into the sky, right? All right, so that should be right in the center there. You can verify there, 7 for top view. There it is going along the X axis there. And make sure you don't have any duplicates. You can click on this bone here, hit G for grab. Make sure there's another one in there. Then just right click. And it puts it back into place. So G for gram, move it, and then notice there's nothing there. You just right click, puts it back in place, and turns off that tool. If there is an extra one in there, the one you move, just left click over there somewhere, hit the S key to delete it, select bones, and it's gone. Control Z, undo, because I did not have an extra. I need that one there. All right. Now I'm going to start parenting these. And the sequence is important, the order is important. So first I'm going to select this one sticking out, sticking off to the side. Left click it, and hold on shift, and click the one pointing up. There we go. And so this will be dominant to the one down here. And I'm going to hit control P and select keep offset. That way they don't move around. There we go. So uh, this one's dominant to this one over here. This one's subordinate. And now I'm going to make these two here um, subordinate to the one up there. This will be the big parent there. So I'm going to click on this one here. Hold on the shift key, click on the one pointing up. And notice I have not clicked on that one. I'm not, not going to click on this one this time. Continue holding the shift and click the one up top. So this one has to be selected last, so that one is a dominant one, the main one up there. Control P, keep offset, bam. All right, so remember when we first brought this one in? That was the first one we brought in. So this is the Z axis for that. Uh, these, uh, this one might think this is the Z axis. That one's gonna think that's the Z axis. This one's gonna think that's the Z axis. So we need to adjust this to make them, uh, make them all know that up and down is the Z axis. So hit A to select all, and then you hit shift N. There we go. You're going to get this recalculate roll menu here and select global plus Z axis there. And that will respect the global Z axis here. All right. And now we're going to go to a new mode. This mode is only accessible uh, with bones. So we're going to go over here to edit mode and select pose mode. There we go. And also you will not be able to access that unless you have a bone selected. Cool. And another way you can tell you're in pose mode besides looking up there is that your bones are all blue. So they should all be blue. All right, so now to start building up our constraints. You're gonna select this bone here sticking out forward. Click on that one first, the one pointing forward. You're gonna hold down the shift key and click on the one pointing off to the side, protruding from the tire uh, face there. So this one first, that one last. These colors should match on your screen as well. And then you're gonna add a constraint there. You're gonna hit shift, hold down shift, control, shift and control. And while holding those out, you're gonna hit C for Carlos. Boom, you're gonna get one of these right here. Uh, add an add constraint menu and you're going to go down here to transformation select transformation boom all right and now if you go over to the properties panel you can click on bone constraints right here this constraints but specifically for bones bone constraints here we go uh if you notice if i click here that's the same menu we could have done it that way too and then we had to insert these bones in here but it's kind of tricky to keep track of uh, which bones which sometimes since we did a name them see all the bones there all right so you're gonna play around with these settings here and follow these uh, accordingly, like me, so this works, so this will work. So you're going to activate extrapolate there. Your target, you're going to change that local with parent. And then owner right here, you're going to change that to local space. Leave influence alone. You're going to open map from right here. That should be location. And there's a location of how far um, it's going to move. Our subject here is going to move. So it's going to be along the y-axis right here. You're going to change the minimum to six and then the maximum two minus six and there, there we go they can open map two this is gonna be for rotation this has to be for rotation and this is gonna be 360 right here for the y and minus 360. if you want to be specific you can find the diameter of your uh, cylinder of your wheel that's that's rotating 
So if you got the diameter of the of the circle there, then you can multiply that by pi, and you have the uh, the perimeter, the circumference, and then those will be the values for your y min and uh, y max. You wouldn't cut it in half; it'd just be positive and the negative value, the opposite there. Uh, so make sure you got this set up right here. So activate extrapolate location, uh, and then the y six and minus six, unless you want to be specific with the circumference. Uh, rotation should also be on the y minimum 360 maximum minus 360 for the degrees all right so now i'm going to test on my uh, constraints here so i'm going to select this one here this bone gx pull it forward cool so that green bone should be rotating there so notice it turned green after the constraints and let me select my main one over here gx and there we go the green one's rotating spinning bam all right so now we're going to go into back into edit mode. So go over here to pose mode and select edit mode. There we go. And I'm going to drag select this setup right here. There we go. That's what we want selected there. And now I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to put over here on the opposite side along the Y axis. So let me hit uh, three for right view. Let me zoom in. I'm in G, Y. And just try to position it somewhere inside of the tire. There we go. So as long as... Um, it's on the same uh, length along the, oops, I didn't even duplicate it. I just said GY, sorry, Shift DY. And here we'll send for top view, Shift DY, and pull it out over here. There we go. As you can see here, it also has a parenting bond. So you continue that. And that just has to be in there. It's already lined up with the same axis. So it has to be along the same height along the uh, X, which, which it already is. I get one for front view. And I can verify right here that it's uh, exactly on the other side of it. All right, so now I'm going to duplicate these. I'll put them in the rear. So I'm going to drag select this one over here as well. There you go. Shift D X and pull that back approximately somewhere in the back tires. Later, we're going to fix it. All right, so there we go. So somewhere in there, whatever looks like to be the right. Uh, sorry, whatever looks to be right in the center. Can't really tell right now. So we're going to go into object mode and we'll fix that right now. Object mode. There we go. I'm going to click on this tire right here. And then I'll move the 3D cursor over there. Shift S. Cursor to selected. So now the cursor is there in the center. And then I'm going to click on my armature here. And in object mode, it's one object, as it should, should, as it should be. Then over to edit mode. And I'm going to only select these right here. I'm going to drag select these. There we go. And then I'm going to bring up the snap menu again. Shift S. Selection of cursor. And it'll adjust it right there on that cursor. There it is. Small adjustment. So I'll a little bit off. Not bad. So back to object mode. I'm going to do the same thing for the other tire over here, the other rear tire, the tire on the uh, passenger side there. So shift S, cursor to selected. Now oh I got my cursor there. Select the bone, go to edit mode. And then now you're going to select these bones back here for the back tire. And that's shift S, selection of cursor. There we go. And the direction of this one is not too important. So it's okay. It can be facing that way. The, the wheels will go in the same direction. If you were to flip this one around, then the wheel will rotate in the opposite direction. Uh, so it'd be clockwise instead of counterclockwise or whatever direction we're going here, we'll go in the counter direction. And there we go, we got our setup there. Now I'm gonna go into pose mode, make sure uh, everything looking good over here, pose mode. Cool, so all of these right here should be green. If not, you're gonna wanna delete some of those and then recreate, um, duplicate, reduplicate your original one there. All right, so now I got a parent, the, um, these tires to this to this bone here right here so each individual uh, tire will have its own parent to its own individual bone there so back to object mode and i'm going to start with this one right here so i'm going to select this one here first and i'm going to hold on the shift key and click on the bone so you got to do it in that order select the tire first hold on the shift and click on any, any of the bones there it doesn't have to be that one it could be this bone up here as well so the bone should have the yellow glow and then the tire should have the orange and this is an object mode now i'm gonna go over to pose mode and select the one you're going to parent it to. So I'm going to parent it to this one. So this will be the dominant one. So if this rotates, the tire will follow along with it. What you got to do is just select that. And it's going to be Control-P. And select bone. There we go. So now I'm going to test it out. I'm going to select this bone right here. GX, pull it forward. There we go. See? It's spinning. Bam. This one here. GX, forward. And there we go. So that one's parented there. That one spins. The other one still needs to be parented. So I'll follow the same sequence here. To do that, so object mode, select the tire that you can apparent, and then hold on shift, select the bone, go over to pose mode, 
and then select the bone that you're going to parent to that tire. So select this bone here. That's for that tire there. Control B, bone. There we go. So back to object mode. And now I'm going to go with this tire over here. There we go. Got it that time. Hold on, shift. Select the bone last. And over to pose mode again. And I'm going to select that bone over there. Control P, bone. There we go. Back to object mode. And I'm going to select this tire here. That's the only one I need. Hold on the shift key, select the bone, any of the bones there. And then back to pose mode and select this bone here because that's the one for that tire. Control P and bone. All right, so now I'm going to test these out. I'm going to select this right here and then GX. And they should all move and they should all rotate. Cool. See, there we go. So they're all rotating and they're all following the, uh, the main parent bone there. All right, so everything's good except for our body's not moving. Our truck's not moving along with the wheels there. All right, so easy fix, just like we've been doing here. Back to object mode. Click on your truck body there. Hold on the shift key. Click on the main bone or any of those bones. Object mode. And then click on pose mode. Go over to pose mode. Now click on the main one up there. Control P, bone. There we go. So now you can test it out. Click on that bone there. GX. And there we go. So the body moves along there with the wheels. Cool. There you go, as easy as that. Yeah, it look a little hard. Let me go over here to render viewport shader so we can see it with some color. There we go. GX, move that around. So in object mode, you won't see it move. Uh, you can move it uh, around, but you won't see the rotations. You won't see the constraints here. That's only in pose mode. So you can only uh, do the rotations there in pose mode. GX, see now the tire is spinning. All the other modes, uh, they will not spin. And you don't want to go back to edit mode once you got your rig set up, because if you do, it's going to mess up some of the alignment there, and you don't want to have to start over. Go back to object mode, and I'm just going to try to set up my scene here. G for grab, put the light over here. Let's see, I got some light there. Let me make it a little stronger. Let's try 5,000. There we go. Light it up some more. Same for top view, G for grab. Put, put one here, or adjust it over there. Shift D, I'll put another light over here. Just give it more of a pop there. Cool. All right, so I'm going to suck my bone here. And I'm going to break up my timeline panel. I'll just create a short 100-frame uh, animation. So right here in end, I'm going to click in there, type in 100. And make sure I'm frame 1. I'm going to go over to pose mode. And I'm going to turn on auto keying right here. Let me adjust this over here. Just drag in here. Hold and drag. Auto keying. There we go. So the record button is on. And I'm going to click on this bone up here, the main one. I'm in frame one. I'm gonna GX, just pull that back. There we go. Around there somewhere. Then I'll jump over to the last frame, so I'm gonna click this button here. GX, pull it, pull it forward. And right there, it's cool with me. All right, let me zoom out. So now I'll turn off auto key. I don't wanna accidentally record anything. All right, I'm hit the play button. There's my animation. There you go, tire spinning and everything. Cool, all right. So now I'll just set up my camera. So back over to object mode, auto keying is off. Now you want my camera around here somewhere, control turn to zero. Select the camera frame, that looks cool. Cool, I'll take that, all right. And maybe I'll pull it up a bit. There we go, I just said GZ with the camera frame selected and I brought it up. All right, uh, currently right now, the speed is constant. Maybe it slows down a little bit at the end. So if you want to play around with the, with the acceleration, go ahead and select uh, your armature. Go back to pose mode. And then down here, you click on the uh, editor type for timeline panel, for timeline, and switch it over to graph editor. Graph editor right here. There we go. And down, have your mouse on here. Hit the home key on your keyboard. It'll just uh, zoom it out right there and center it. Let me pull this up. And this green one right here, that's the animation right there for the... Um, for your for your bone there, the big bone right there. So if I play around with this, oh, right now I got everything selected, so that's why it's doing that. Let me Control Z undo there. So just click on the green line first, on the green graph. There we go. I'm gonna click on this dot here, and I can use this like a vector graphic. See, pulling it out. I'm hit the space bar for play, and I can ease it in or ease it out. So I'm gonna pause it. Make sure I click on the on the green green line. These pins right here, sorry, the pins at the uh, frame one and, and frame 100, the keyframes. And then you can right click it and you can choose the easy type. So if you want it to start off slow and then accelerate at the end, you're going to go with ease in. 
If you want it to start off fast and then slow down at the end, come to a stop, you're gonna choose ease out. So I'm gonna go with ease out right here. All right, and I'm gonna right click that again. And I'm gonna go over here to interpolation mode and I want it to be more obvious. So I'm gonna choose uh, quantic there. All right, there we go. So spacebar, notice my graph there changed. So now the first frames are displayed in uh, less time and then the last ones are, are displayed through uh, more time. And it'll create the illusion that it's slowing down at the end. There we go. So I'm done with that. I'm gonna go back over here to timeline panel. I go timeline editor type. Do it for camera view. And there it is. It just slowly comes to a stop at the end. I'm gonna pause it, try to render this out. Uh, ambient occlusion, bloom, motion blur, and that's for the glow for the lights there, the bloom. And if you don't want that glow, just, just turn off bloom. But I like it. And over here, click on output and then file format, AVI JPEG. And I'm going to click on this folder here so I can save it and give it a name. Give a pop up window, save it on the desktop, except wait for that to go through. All right. And then I can hit Control F12 to render, or I can go to uh, right here to render and select uh, render animation wait patiently for my uh, animation here to render shouldn't take too long only 100 frames four second animation so that animation is done rendering let's take a look at it <laughs> all right cool all right i want to give a shout out to uh tally jenner for a uh, blend swap for uh, for providing the model description at the uh Sorry, a link in the description. And also want to give a shout out to Pixel3D for providing this video for us, for showing me uh, the basics here on how to create a, a rig for a wheel. And uh, Pixel3D here has a bunch of cool videos for you want to enjoy. So I recommend subscribe. Boom, help them out. And I'm gonna give them a like here as well. Thanks, brah. All right, thank you for watching everybody. Have an awesome day. Uh, anything helps, uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, give me a comment, share. Everything helps. Have a wonderful evening. Take care. Bye.